So when you get off the elevator at Dornbecker Children's Hospital, there's a poem by Kim Stafford on the wall, and it reads like this. Young friend, be a part of something old. Be home here in the great world, where rain wants to give you drink, where forest wants to be your house, where frogs say your name and your name, where wee birds carry your wishes far, and the sun reaches for your hand. Be home here. Be healed, be well, be with us all, young friend. Now, some of you might want to know why I've been up at Dornbecker Children's Hospital, and I'm the executive director of the Children's Healing Art Project. And our mission is to bring the healing power of art to children and families in crisis through a mobile team of teaching artists. We partner with、um, Dornbecker Children's Hospital, Knight Cancer Institute. The Schnitzer Diabetes Center and the Pediatric Neurosurgery Clinic at OHSU, and we also have a studio in Southeast Portland where kids can come who are dealing with or living with chronic illness or disabilities, and come and make art once a week in our studio. So going back to the poem, the first time I read this, I fell in love with it, but there was something about the word naknuisha that really struck a chord with me, and I didn't know why, but it was something that just Was in the back of my head, so I Googled it, and I found out that it's a Sahaptin term that means to care for something so precious it swallows you. And when I heard that, it was like the heavens opened up, and I finally had a word that described how I feel about the work that we do. Now I'm no stranger to art being a healing process.、Um, I'm an artist myself. And I come from a very rich Armenian family. I have a grandmother who lost her battle with cancer, and my father is a cancer survivor. And all the work that I make is、um, autobiographical. It's all about my family. And I always thought making this work that、um, I was doing it to just document my family's history. But I realized after working at CHAP and working with these children that it was so much more than that. That、um, I was learning about my Armenian history, my heritage,、um, the survival of my grandfather's、um, my grandfather surviving the Armenian genocide, and it became so much more than just documenting my family's history. So I wanted to show you a couple of my prints before I move on to the kids that we work with. This was a print that I made about my grandfather, and、um, every Sunday after church, he would take me and my sister and my cousins out for lunch. And one day we went to Derwiner Schnitzel in Southern California, and、um, my sister ordered a hamburger with, and forgot to say no tomatoes. And my grandfather Janie starts picking the tomatoes off of her burger, and my grandfather looks at her and says, "You have to eat those tomatoes." And she's like, "I don't like tomatoes. I'm not going to eat them." And he's like, "If you don't eat those, I'm going to stuff them in your ear." <laughs> so she ignores him, thinking he's just being a grumpy old man. And he stuffs them in her ear, <laughs> right there in the restaurant. And you know, we just thought he was being grumpy, and we were mortified, and, and couldn't believe he did that in public. And it wasn't until years and years later, when I started making artwork about my grandfather and the Armenian genocide, that I realized that he didn't stuff those tomatoes in her ear because she was being, he was a grumpy old man. He did it because he nearly starved to death three times on three separate death marches through the Syrian desert. This is my grandmother. This is a piece that I collaborated with my husband on, and I didn't know my grandmother. She lost her battle with cancer when I was just two, so I didn't know her at all. But I'm named after her, and my family tells me that I'm just like, excuse me, just like her.、Um, so I started making a series of prints about her as a way to get to know her. So today, I want to share some of the biggest lessons that I've learned from working at CHAP. From some amazing young children, and I'm only going to share three with you today. There's a million that I could share, but I'm only given 15 minutes.、Um, and working at CHAP has influenced just about more than I could have ever imagined.、Um, it's impacted my my approach to art making. 
It's impacted how I treat others and interact with others. And it's impacted just about every aspect of my life. This is Teresa. Teresa doesn't have any arms, and it's really interesting hearing the story by Brian about the woman without any arms. Um, and the first time that I really got to know her was a class that I was teaching where we were making wearable art and we were screen printing t-shirts and weaving belts out of recycled materials and all kinds of stuff. And there were maybe, I don't know, maybe 12 kids in the class. And Teresa takes off her shoes to start making the artwork. And all the kids look at her like, they didn't even notice she didn't even have any arms. And they looked at her and, and they just, you know, went on to doing their own thing. And I'm walking around the class, checking in on everybody. And all of a sudden, I noticed that none of the kids have their shoes or socks on. And they're all making art with their feet. <laughs> this is Teresa now. Um, and it, real, I, it occurred to me at that moment that the, the environment that chat provides for these kids and these families is a safe one where they can just be kids, where they're not going to look be looked at by their disease or diagnosis or disability. They're looked at for their creative ingenuity and their creative talents. And these children in this class looked at Teresa not because she didn't have any arms, because, but because they were amazed by what she could do with her feet and they wanted to be just like her. This is Stella. We first met Stella up in the hospital when she was getting treatment for cancer. I'm proud to report she is a survivor. This was Stella at our last event um, last November. And she and her sister come down to art club and hang out and make the most amazing art. But there's, there's a sense of freedom about these two girls that I've never seen in anybody else. And I asked Stella a few weeks ago what it is about CHAP that is her favorite thing. And she told me that it's a place that she can express her feelings artistically, she could do whatever she wants, because there are no rules at CHAP. In fact, if a parent tells a kid how to make their artwork, they get a timeout. So the kids are always begging their parents to tell them what to do. <laughs> so um, one of the things Stella said that really struck a chord with me was, CHAP is a place where she can express her feelings and enjoy happiness and sadness and madness. And the fact that she said she can enjoy sadness and madness was something I'd never heard anybody say before. And she said it because she's able to express those feelings artistically, and she loves art. And whatever you put in front of her, she's going to create a masterpiece, whether it's sculpting with clay or drawing in a sketchbook or painting. But it's because that she's drawing from her heart, and she's creating from her, intuitively, that she doesn't put herself inside a box. She just makes stuff and has a blast with it. This is Josh. Josh has part, been part of the CHAP family long before I have. And CHAP isn't just for kids, it's for the, the entire families. Um, Josh comes in with his mom and his sister sometimes when she's in town and his dad. And most of the time, Josh won't even make any art. He'll just run around the studio, show us his new taekwondo moves torment the staff and heckle us and just have fun. But his mom is always at the table creating. And he'll walk over and he'll look at what she's doing and he'll put a couple marks on, this, on her painting or whatever it is. But the second Josh walks over to her, she, she stops. And the attention that they pay to each other in their company is something that I've never seen before. It's a bond that I don't think that anybody will understand unless they've been in a similar situation. Um, with having somebody very close to you be ill and almost die. And I, I watch this family and I'm, I'm just totally amazed by their ability to be present. And I think in this crazy world with cell phones and screens and all this stuff, we get so buried in whatever it is we're looking at in front of us that we forget about the people around us and forget to interact with them and cherish those small moments, even if it's just sitting on the couch with your husband watching TV or doing a painting. And I asked um, April, Josh's mom, 
to ask Josh what it was that it was his favorite thing about CHAP, and she responded with the whole families. And Josh said it was the craziness, his dad said that it was uh, the community, and his mom said the freedom. And I was amazed that it totally aligned with three of the biggest things that I've learned from working at CHAP. You can see that Josh loves the craziness. Um, I've learned from them to be more free, to be more present, and to really see people for who they are and pay attention to the people around me. And not every day is fun and art making and crazy. There are times that are really hard. Um, in fact, the first day that I was executive director, I went to a memorial service for a four-year-old girl who lost her battle with cancer. But I remember, at the end of the day, the things that I've learned from these kids, and I remember to be more present, and to be more free, and to really see people. And although I may be tired and exhausted and covered in paint, I'm still grinning ear to ear because I have the best job in the world. And earlier today, Stephen Kellogg said something about knowing why you work. I know why I work. And it's the best feeling in the world. Now, there's one more story that I want to share with you. The first time I ever went up to the hospital, it was for an art show featuring kids on the oncology floor. And I walked into the family room and was hanging out with some of the kids, and some of the kids were making sculpted flowers and just hanging out and having a blast. And in scoots this little girl on her trike, and her dad is pulling her IV pole behind her, and she's as bald as can be from her treatment. And she sits down at the table with all the other kids and starts making artwork and painting, and um, one of the teachers there introduces me to her. And I don't have a picture of her painting, I'm sorry, I have this. <laughs> um, the teacher introduces me to her, and I realized that the painting behind her has her name on it. And I was like, oh, hey, is this your painting? And she looked up at it and said, yeah, and just went back to doing what she was doing. And I said, I love that you painted a rainbow then you can see with clouds over it, and you can see the rainbow through the clouds. And the painting really was just a bunch of colors smeared like a rainbow. And then it looked like she had dipped her entire hand in a big glob of black paint and just smeared it right across the top of the rainbow. But you could see the colors through it. And she looked up at me with these giant blue eyes and said, well, yeah. <laughs> and I was just like, oh my gosh, the wisdom in this little girl. And here I am making a purely aesthetic comment on how nice the painting looked. And this little girl was able to find some light and color and joy in this really dark time. And it's because of little girls like this and other children that we work with that I've been able to find Naknuisha in my own life. I've found something that I care about that is so precious that it swallows me. And that's my wish for all of you guys, is to find that in your own lives. Thank you. Thank you.